Episode number four. Four. Is that the European or the American? Four. Oh, okay. We're going that way. I don't know. We're going to get in trouble when we get over ten episodes, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> we'll let you think about that. <clears throat> um, <laughs> all right. Episode number four. Um, welcome back. Have we had any major weather since our last filming? Uh, we had a little bit of flooding. We've had the spring melt. So it's a beautiful 60-ish degree day today. It was great. <clears throat> it was fantastic. But last week, as the temperatures climbed above freezing, we got a little bit of rain. And uh, we a lot of places, not just us, we got away with a little bit of water in our barn. But um, if you've seen my most recent video about that, um, Lots of other places across the country suffered far worse flooding. So, yeah. no complaints. Yeah, we got I, lucky. I would say the whole area kind of dodged a bullet. We had some melt. We had a lot of ice backing up, but mm -hmm. thankfully it kind of went yeah. down and it passed without being too crazy of a year on the weather. Um, anything happened since the last video? I don't even remember. Uh, I went out west. You went out west. Skied Red Lodge. Woo! That was fun. Brought back some amazing beer. That was good. Bruno. The Bruno. Montana IPA from Red Lodge uh, Ales. So sweet, sweet IPA. Fantastic. So if you're out there, anywhere, try it, get it. We brought back bombers, so we actually can't quite spin glass bottles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, did that. We got a little bit of milling done. We did four logs. Four logs got milled, and it wasn't. It was an epic day of milling, but yes. not a. It was a, a good epic, not a bad. Not epic. a yeah, like the one before. Yep. No, we did. We set up another mill, so now we're at three between the two of us. Yep. <laughs> three. Uh, we set up a little small mill, uh, the Grandbird small log mill. 20 inch bar on a 461 saw. Mm -hmm. There is a video, we'll throw a card up there. Yep. A sweet, sweet little setup oh. for just first cuts, <clears throat> easy adjustment. It made the whole process go so much faster. We got through four logs in an afternoon. Like, I don't think we started until two. Yes. And wrapped up about six, so like four hours. Yes. Uh, in including <clears throat> video. Yeah, including video and <laughs> so conversation. That, and that always adds extra time to every yep. project. Don't know how that is. Mm -hmm. um, are we staying on task? We're, we set the timer again tonight, so we, we should stay on task. Um, but no, that was just a really sweet setup. So now once we get, we've got the opening cut, we've got a 36 inch, and we've got a 60 inch setup. Oh, excuse me. Um, so our whole milling process should speed up and we should get a lot processed this year. And some of the wood that we cut last year is starting to get used. It's yes. actually here. Look at that. Um, <clears throat> so this is some of our silver maple that's been drying and building up some fungus and mold and interestingness. And once you run it through the planer, throw a little hand plane action on it and a little oil, uh, mineral oil, that just shines. Yes. We've also got a stack of uh, three 10 foot sections of ash here. Mm -hmm. uh, that's going to turn into a new desk for my mom. Lucky. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Taking care of that. So no, it's actually fun that a lot of the wood is starting to get used besides just going on a ceiling and right. into timbers. But no, that's awesome. So a lot of good videos on Ben's channel. I've got a couple up, so we'll link to some of those or just find them. You're already there. Uh, episode four here. We wanted to talk about tools because... Well, first, uh, where are we? Oh. You might notice this is a different location. This is a different location. If you watch the last video, you, you'll know where we are. Or well, if you're paying attention, you'll know where we are. Well, so that means three, three people know where we are. Thanks for watching. We really appreciate all three of you. 
It's our mom and our wives. Yes. Well, your wife, I <laughs> So we are in my shop, so welcome officially to the Duck Hill Workshop. Uh, oh. You can see way back there, we'll show you the, you know, the big, you can see all of it. You're okay. hanging from a canoe, I don't know if it's in the shot up there. Yes, I, uh, maybe just a little bit of it, but. It's a two-car garage, it's interesting, um, but I love it, and it's what I have. So, we make the best of it. And I think you might even have mentioned in one of your videos, you have some incredible, um, Ooh, yes, LED lights up there. American green lights out of California, and they're super cool. I actually I had some issues, and they took care of me within a w less than a week uh, to get me back up and running at full strength. And but it's and it's a good light. It is a good light. It's uh, color balanced at whatever fifty six K six K for daylight, and it's fantastic. And then there's two nice strips up there, which means there's not many shadows here. So the workbench is awesome yes. on that. So, uh, yeah, welcome to Duck Hill. This is the other shop of In the Shop. Mm -hmm. It's where the magic thing. happens. Uh, episode four, we were going to start talking about tools, because in the shop there are usually tools. <clears throat> oh, a few. Just a few. In the When we started talking about what we want to talk about tools, um, I just added in the metal part of my shop, uh, I've had an old Milwaukee <clears throat> abrasive disc cutoff saw, and through watching YouTube, I found and saw the new DeWalt um, multi-cutter, low speed, no speed, carbide disc with the uh, uh, Diablo mm -hmm. Steel Demon. Yeah, the Serment. And it, Still, I'm still trying to wrap my head around how that works, but it sparked the conversation of when do you upgrade, when do you change, when do you replace, and all these mm -hmm. things about tools. So that's what we're going to talk about. Give you a few tips tonight. We're going to give you four. Four tips because it's episode four. Four. <laughs> Today's show has been brought to you by the number four and the letter D. The fourth letter in the alphabet. And we're in Duck Hill. Yeah. Boom. Whoa. I just inceptioned that. <laughs> it's just how it happens here. All right. Number one. This number one. one is heirloom, heirloom tools and sentimental value of your tools. So a big challenge when you have a tool that uh, you, you know, maybe you got from your dad and your dad got it from his dad and his dad got it from his dad. Uh, it's a lot of fun and really, really meaningful to work with those tools, but that's a lot of abuse for a tool to take. And over time, it either, it wasn't a good quality tool to begin with and you're just using it because everybody's used it, or it was a quality tool and it's just run its course and it's a, more of a challenge to work with than, um, than it's work or than the work that it does. The example of that is this is a keen cutter number five, a K5 uh, bench plane that I got from my grandfather. And the downside to it, it looks, it's beautiful. I've done, I've cleaned all the rust off. It has a bedrock style sole, which is super neat. Um, and it um, is in really good shape, except for the fact that the frog is broken and the lateral adjustment is missing and so while I've got it set up essentially to act as a scrub plane with a really heavy cambered blade for stock removal what I needed was something that filled the role of the jack plane and so instead of futzing with this all the time to try and get it to be a perfect plane I straight up just went out and decided to buy a Lee Nielsen number five low angle um, it's actually like the 60 I don't remember the number of it. Um, however, the benefit here is that <laughs> don't remember the number. <laughs> yeah, well, it's not a five. The five, the five is the high angle plane. Um, the it's like maybe it's a fifty-seven something. I don't. know. The low angles are different. Anyways, I bought a plane that will get handed down to my grandchildren, so someday my kids and their kids can have this same conundrum of do I fix Grandpa's plane or. <clears throat> do I keep on? Do I buy something new? Um, 
the other part of that is just do I keep it? Do I what do I put it to use as? There are some things I also have with like these hand saws. They don't have any. Um, they're not heirloom. They have a little bit of sentimental value because I bought them from an antique shop hoping to repair them. Um, but you can sharpen a saw, but it's a real pain to take a bow out of the saw plate. <laughs> I don't have the equipment to do that, so instead of fixing that, I bought a new saw. And I think one of the things that might play into this, because if you, if you were one of those lucky people to watch episode three, or you can go back and watch episode three, uh, we talked a little bit about what we call show shops mm -hmm. um, and real shops, and there might even be another nuance into that. If this is a hobby hobby, it's fine. Kind of, I don't want to say putzing, but working and tinkering yeah. in that fine line of being a little bit more than a hobby shop, because as much as this is kind of fun for Ben, uh, this is his livelihood. Mm -hmm. So he's actually making things in here. So when you start to cross over into the shop of where this tool actually needs to perform because you need to get a project yep. done and it's not just the coolness of making it there on that side. That's when it also shows in there. Yep. And, and sometimes... <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, we can talk about where there's definitely a point in time where you uh, repair is probably not an option despite what somebody tried to do. <laughs> and there's a story probably behind that. Which there, oh, there is. We'll never know. <laughs> ben, where's my... <laughs> never throw. Now, we'll come into that because that's Ben's next one. Uh, for me, the, the, the first tip that I'm going to share is there is a safety. So when we are talking about um, these tools that came, that are on that heirloom that were passed down in there, or just that I've had in the shop for 20 years, that example of that Milwaukee, it's still... It's still there, but there's some safety issues. So that's where I start to go. I actually have a mini table saw, not mini as in quantity, but very small, little neat table saw that has no guards on it and this really weird engine underneath it. That was my grandfather's yep. from Michigan. Um, so that thing's 70, 80 years old. It's neat. It functions. But it's not worth running just because that's how you lose fingers and lose eyes and things get caught in belts and it, just that safety factor that's when it's time to upgrade uh one of your tools if it just there's safety features in there on, on power tools especially power, power tools. tools it's hard to upgrade safety features on a chisel <laughs> uh, keep them sharp they do less damage when they go through your hand yes <laughs> they don't tear they just cut so now Ooh, all right, so number three, 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 three. Number three is when to repair and when to replace. So if you buy good quality tools, the reality is, is that you should be able to repair them. Don't fall into the myth of thinking that good quality tools never break down. Things wear out, parts fail, a casting was not good, or slip through quality control, it happens. Um, but... If it's a good quality tool, you're repairing it, not buying the next $30 thing from Harbor Freight. Not that they're bad. <clears throat> not well. I think that's anything. That, there's a, there is a, a, an art form to buying quality Harbor Freight tools. Yes, there is. <laughs> there are several videos out there. <laughs> on, which on, ones are good and which ones are not. Which ones are not good on that. Um, and, but I would even say there's something that in this world of... of branding and all of the things stuff ends up at a big box or even at a big box that's not a hardware store that they've just slapped a name brand on it and just because you see yellow or orange or blue or some color in that power tool mm -hmm. it, it's the entry level and the interior is not worth having right i mean there's other parts of that discussion as with what you're telling me that old john deere skid steers were just rebranded new hollands yep they were so if there's, you know, if you had some weird bias against New Holland, but you had to go out and buy a John Deere, you were not that they're, they're good skid steers, but... You, and that whole world has changed up because yeah. now the New Hollands are actually cases, yeah. and John Deere made their own skid loaders now, so... Which, and which down which the rabbit hole we go. And there we uh, but the point here being is, like, <laughs> broken beyond repair, you could waste all your time trying to get that fixed up and running, 
This one could actually function. It's a cool, it's a neat one. It's an adjustable mouth block plane in this scenario, but the, the adjustable mouth is seized up in the body. Um, so I'm not gonna try and fix that. I, again, went and bought a new one because like Glenn said, I need my tools to perform when I need them. Perfect. So. And number four, the fourth tip, which somewhat can go along with um, safety, but it's technology and just improvements in tools. Um, like I had mentioned, the abrasive cutoff saw that's on my <clears throat> miter station for metal at uh, back at my shop is getting replaced with that new DeWalt multi-cutter, which I haven't used yet, but I am still scratching my head taking a carbide blade and cutting an inch thick piece of steel. We're gonna have to do it. We will do that. There will be a video about that because it's just- Slow motion. That is like really interesting and crazy to me. But technology, uh, th those improvements happen. And even if you are just doing hobby things, that's when you need to start upgrading. When uh, planers get better, the spiral cuts in there. There's just all kinds of little technology improvements and tools that it makes it time to invest in that next. And the further you get into your shop, the more that you're doing in your shop, the more that it's worth putting those quality tools in play. Definitely. So there. Cool. Four tips. Four tips in. I want to know. Oh, we got three minutes. Whoa! Oh my goodness. We can, yeah. Four we can tips. Like... <laughs> and drink a whole beer. We can drink a whole beer in there. Did you... uh, beer? Beer? Beer. Are you saving the beer? We're going to add something new to this one. Um, we are going to do a shop shout out. Ooh, that's right. A shop shout out. I definitely didn't forget that. No. <laughs> um, of course. We forgot his name, but that's okay. It, it, it's a shop shout out because we spend just as much time watching YouTube videos as you do about the other things that are out there and who is doing things and stuff. Yeah. And there is one that is called um, The Workshop at Hidden Homestead. Homestead. Yes. And it's awesome, especially he's doing timber framing, blacksmithing, woodworking. And crazy concrete stuff. That's true. Painted yeah. concrete. Painted concrete. It's the funny thing. But worth watching. His trailer video is just like, I think I've watched it six times already. It's just very cinematic, very enjoyable. And he uh, also has an epic beard. Yeah, which well, I will uh, props for that. Yep, props for the good beard. <laughs> and watch a couple of them. He has a he has an interesting way of tempering himself. So mm, yes, that's worth watching. So we will put uh, a card or a link. Both. So there'll be a card up there to his channel, <clears throat> or at least a video. We'll put the card to the trailer video up there, and down below we'll put a link to his uh, YouTube channel. Show him some love, subscribe to his channel, follow him, and he's doing some pretty cool stuff out there. So shop shout out to the workshop at Hidden Homestead. Homestead. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> cool. And of course, it would not be an episode. Absolutely of not. In the shop. shop with Ben and Glenn yep. without beer spawn. Spinning, spinning. So today's unofficial, official, official, unofficial beer sponsor is Duluth Brew House, secretly brewed in New Richmond, Wisconsin. Otherwise known as, well, that's the figures. But, anyways, it doesn't matter. It's a good. <clears throat> the apricot wheat. Ooh, delicious. Yes. And even though this is hooked up to a Milwaukee, we are going to say that the unofficial tool sponsor of this episode is Lee Nielsen Tool Works. Because <clears throat> I've spelled out a lot of cash with them lately. Yes. Uh, anyways, all right, let's get to it. Spin, baby, spin. Do not try this at home. <laughs> there you have it. <laughs> <laughs> the next one's gonna be by safety glasses. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, 
There we are. Cool. So, we've been... Ben. And? Glenn. In the shop. In Duck Hill Workshop. Thanks so much for tuning in, watching. Uh, I don't think we asked you to comment on anything. You can. You should totally tell us what tools you've broken, yes. tried to repair, and ended up buying a new one instead. That would be great to hear. Um, we really would appreciate it if you followed each of our channels. So Links below. Duck Hill Workshop. And then my channel, which that's what you're watching. So if you haven't hit the subscribe button and the bell, we'd love it if you do that. You can also find us on all the other things. Instagram, Facebook. Ooh, oh, and now on TikTok. Oh, thank you very much. Go and follow Glenn on his four videos on TikTok. Yes, four videos a day. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, that guy. That's it. Cool. Until next time. Cheers.